Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to episode 299 of the On Air Advocate. We're at the On Air Advocate. We provide education, advocacy, and supportive services for special needs parents, caregivers, and those with different abilities and complex medical conditions. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Tammy Flynn, and I am the host and producer of The Honor Advocate, and I am super excited if you are here this afternoon joining us or whether you are catching it on the replay. Now, as always, if you think any of the content we are talking about today could be relevant for anyone in your network or your circle, please hit the share button and share the love with others. Well, if you guys have been following along, you know that we are almost wrapping up our transition series. And so with that, I am so excited to welcome back to the show, Evelina Castro. She is an adaptive trainer and an instructor, and she is a makeup artist and a designer. She's a girl after my own heart. <laughs> so I am so excited to have you here today, Evelina. I am so excited to be back. Oh my goodness. I always love coming back. Yes. And so for guests that possibly haven't ever met you before on this show, I would love for you to just give us a little bit about your background. Ooh, well, um, I, <laughs> I, I'm a trainer. I'm an instructor on the Fit for Life platform. And mm -hmm. I, I've been a makeup artist for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I also did and sometimes still do um, voiceover work as well. Um, and let's <laughs> been an actor. I have all kinds of uh, yeah. You fun have stuff all these titles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and as we were chatting about before the show, you obviously transitioned quite a bit ago. Um, but what I love about your journey, that is why I wanted you on the show today to share, is that you have had multiple different passions that have turned into employment, um, not without some struggle. And I know that you're going to share some of that, you know, today. But I know that many, obviously, as you're going high school and beyond and thinking about okay, well, could I really do beauty school? Could I really become a makeup artist? Could I really become an actress? Could you know, I really be teaching other people like you're doing in fitness. Um, so I would love for you to just kind of start out how you got into the fields that you did, you know, and then pursuing an employment behind them, some of those struggles. So you can pick whichever one you want to start with. I know, I think you started with makeup probably first. Um, and, and you've done a lot of stage makeup too for theater, right? Like theater Actually, work. Yes, I've done a lot of stage um, makeup for for theater. Um, I got into makeup through acting for stage, um, and I went to a theater conservatory for for acting for acting school and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of where like that things kind of started as far as like following these different paths. Um, for me, uh, I've always had uh, like a, a passion for fitness. It's always been important my entire life. I was into, <clears throat> excuse me, I was into sports when I was young. I competed in track, field and archery. Um, and, and that was great, but then I took a long break and then I got into theater and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I really like how like acting nowadays, actually, I would say if you wanted to, if, if for anybody who wanted to get into acting, I mean, it's really difficult regardless, disability yeah. or not. Um, it's just enhanced if you have a disability by a lot, actually. But nowadays, because um, society is is changing a lot. You know, they're, they're trying to be more diverse. Um, they're trying to include a lot more people, um, in various areas. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it does mean that you're going to be looked at. You're probably going to be looked at much more than when I was in theater. Cause I had so many directors go, well, the, um, Characters not written for a wheelchair. The characters, um, you know, the the theater's not accessible. Um, this, that, and 
whatever I've heard it. And I got, (laughs) yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, And as much as I loved performing, I really got sick and tired of hearing just the excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse, because that's really what it was. I can understand if I had a bad audition, totally fine. Just say, as an actor, I was taught to say, thank you. Leave it at that. You right. know. But I feel like uh, there's so many people, a lot of directors that are like, oh, that was great, blah, blah, blah. But only if this, if that is why I don't understand why they can't just say thank you. Mm-hmm. Just stop at after thank you. Right. You know, you don't have to make up the excuses. You don't have to. We don't want to hear it. We could see through it. You know, if we've been on right. enough of them. Um, but, um, and that's not even just in theater and, you know, I've had that with makeup. Um, I've had that in, when I was in radio as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the boards are, the boards are really high. I was a soundboard operator and the board was like this high. Um, so I had to sit on two cushions to, um, accommodate myself but they were able to but they gave me a shot they a lot of times places and I don't I really don't mean to sound disrespectful Mm -hmm. um but it's just kind of easier to say it the way I see it so a lot of places if you do get hired there are those places that will throw you a crumb and it's like oh the kid with the disability Mm -hmm. um with with or without the chair yeah we'll hire them because nobody else will hire and i apologize that sounds really really rude um but for me that's kind of basically kind of been the case um i was a soundboard operator i was i wanted to ultimately be on air because i wasn't on air i was just behind the scenes doing sound work right right. and uh, you know the guy i i stayed there for like a year and a half and I, I ended up quitting because I was like, I'm the only one here not getting on air work. And people who didn't even work in the station. Um, it, I shouldn't say this part. <laughs> this, this could be bad. Um, came in and voiced some commercials, but they wouldn't hire me who wanted to be on the mic. Right. You know, right. Just, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know what that had to do with into doing some of that voice work on your own, because obviously you didn't have the opportunity because I know that you do voiceovers and stuff for others. Yeah. I had to branch out. I just kind of, you know, I contacted places. I did some audiobook narration, which I found out I hate. I personally, I can't stand it. Okay, so um, I'm not going to ask you to do the audio of a book I write. Then. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like short books, perfect. Like novel, like, oh my goodness. No, thank you. Um, But you just started being creative and putting your work out there because you have an amazing voice. You you just started putting that out there and you did get some work that way. Yes. Yeah, actually um, kind of more freelancing work. Um, I've I've done the, the city bus like the city bus, I'm the voice of the the call out stops. You know the the stuff that says next stop is blah blah blah. I'm the person <laughs> here in my town that says that, and I also take the bus in my town too. So um, I have to like ignore myself because I hear myself every time <laughs> I met you on the bus. That's great. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. awesome. That's fun. That was actually pretty fun. I really did enjoy that. But um, so, would you say that a suggestion would be? Uh, let's talk about the voiceover, radio, all of that. But if you're interested in that, doing things where you can put your voice out there as more freelance work might yes. be the better avenue to go. Absolutely, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I would even what I started doing to do that. Originally, <laughs> originally, I wanted to have a podcast, 
but my brain doesn't necessarily work in uh, in that way where it, it it I think of a podcast and I'll try and start it and then it just I get like brain fart. I'm like, okay, where do I go from here? <laughs> but um, I went on, I don't even know if it exists now still or anymore. Um, I went, uh, I don't know, what's it called? Like, um, I forget what it's, oh my, like SoundCloud? Oh, yeah. Yeah, things like that. And I've done like readings of poetry if you speak more than one language do that if you do accents that are realistic mm -hmm. um do read something with that but don't sound like you're ready but perform it um stuff like that and then share it you can also do um there are pay to play websites too um right. they have like a monthly or yearly fee and they will send you auditions now, the chance of getting something on those are typically, I, I think, pretty slim unless you immediately, like, respond to them. Most of the time I'm out and about when I receive, when I used to do those and I uh, would receive them and I was like, okay, well, by the time I recorded it, they were, like, already cast and whatnot. So those you have to be really prompt with. Okay. And now, at when... Did you start first with things you were saying you did the, the acting and then that led into your makeup career and going to makeup school? Yes, actually. Okay. And acting also led me into voiceover because that's where I was just like, I'm so tired of people using my chair against me, my disability against me. Um, mm -hmm. I still wanted to perform, but I needed another outlet. So voiceover was my outlet. Because I was also trying to get into um, animation. Okay. And that was really fun. I love animation, actually. Mm hmm Well, I need to see all these talents. <laughs> 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 I've seen some of them. So in doing makeup, so going to makeup school, what did you find were things that, um, you know, for, through the process that were um, a little bit challenging, but then what were things that ended up kind of being a win out of it and, you know, finding work and, and how you found work um, in that area? For me, um, because it, it really helped that I, you know, tried to be in theater. If you, if you want to be actually going back to the acting thing, if you <clears throat> want to pursue acting and you have other talents, they have paperwork for you to fill out. And it says, if you don't get cast, would you like to help out in any other areas? Um, so I started putting makeup and I found out that they're like, hey, so um, can you send us some makeup stuff? Cause we, we can't cast you, but we would love to see what you could do makeup wise for certain shows. Yeah. Yeah. And that can also be an indirect in if you can show that they if you have that you have um, another talent as well as then you can probably you can start in that area and work your way maybe into okay. the acting pool. pool. Okay. And did you find that when you went to makeup school that they were um, accommodating? Did you find that? you know, they were helpful. Cause obviously like we were talking, um, for those that don't know, yes, I am the on-air advocate, but in my other life, I am also a makeup artist. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we were just talking before the show, but sometimes the challenges, right. When you're on set or you're at an event or you're doing a group of women, you know, just for space and, and all your things and, you know, making sure everything's sanitary and, and all of that. When you were in school, were they accommodating for those types of things? I went to cinema makeup school and um, they, they were, I guess they were accommodating. They were not not accommodating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd say they were accommodating actually because I did a prosthetic course and I really love special effects makeup. That's like my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and making prosthetics, you have to be, there's a big process that goes along with it. You have to um, 
get this like cast of the person's face face um it's uh it's a heavy plaster cast um mm -hmm. of the face and you you may need help picking up things and carrying things i needed help kind of prying things open because there's major suction when you're trying to open from the cast there's many layers that you have to kind of pry open and I needed help with that. And the molds can be kind of big and bulky and whatnot. And so like, I did need help with that. Luckily they, they did help me out with that. Um, it is very tight. Um, it was, <clears throat> it wasn't a big, uh, classroom. So you have to watch out with the wheelchair, make sure you're not going to run into people that have like, <laughs> you know, molds that can break plaster because of the plaster. Right. I'm sorry. Right. So, so you're in a little bit more of a confined area. So just making, you know, having enough adequate space. Um, but in the whole process, they seemed overall pretty accommodating with all okay. of that. And then when it came though time for graduation from there and then seeking out actual opportunities, employment opportunities, what did you find with that? Um, with that, they, uh, luckily, like once you graduate and whatnot, you get on an email list and they, they will send you job opportunities. Um, I, when I was an actor, I got really weary about putting on my resume that I am an actor with a disability or a PWD, um, mm -hmm. because I got so sick of, you know, like I had mentioned, I got so sick of hearing all the excuses. So I, I'm not even going to put it on my resume. Mm -hmm. Well, don't do that. That's a big mistake. That's a big no, no, because excuse me, you will make a lot of enemies that way. Um, if you show up and you're and like, Hey, how's it going? Oh, we don't have any access for you. You can't audition. Um, right. but that's kind of the same thing with makeup. When you contact, um, you get these emails and stuff, uh, and you respond to them, I like to not say it immediately uh, that I have a wheelchair. I do like to send them my work. So that way they kind of, you kind of get them that way. Cause it's like, if they really want you enough, if they like your work enough, right. they're going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. they, they'll hire you. And uh, so I kind of tend to do that. I, I, you know, email saying, hi, I noticed that you're hiring in the <clears throat> um, backstage. Uh, by the way, are you hiring for um, makeup artist or makeup designer? Because um, they don't, a lot of theater particularly, they don't, they don't put that out there because that's kind of like a secondary thing because a lot of actors do their own makeup. But in on camera stuff that's that's kind of another issue because they have like makeup um rooms and they have what are they called um like trailers and things that are super super small and they typically don't hire um ma makeup artists with in a wheelchair you know right. unless the trailer and be able to do those things yeah, so I've done um, independent stuff. Um, I've done boudoir photo shoots. Um, if it's not accessible, I do tend to say, hey, look, can we meet at another location that's very close by, but mm -hmm. um, but that's doable. And that's that's worked typically for me. And I just have them sit in a chair and, you know, whatnot. Okay. And then you've done some theater though the um the and not animation makeup what is it called again the what's what's the word i'm searching for opera the bloody yeah. arms like all those pictures you post oh <laughs> special effects special <laughs> effects that's a word we're looking for right along. okay um so special effects makeup you have done quite a few things like didn't you work for one company that you did like a whole kind of series of that or that you actually flew out or was that in your area um, a friend and I actually, we both kind of worked together to make, um, silicone body parts for a zombie movie based out of Alaska. Um, oh, that was interesting. Body, body parts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, was, 
the, what was that? I'm like, look at all the awesome different opportunities. Zombie right. arts. I love it. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And also like um, I within theater, I've done some special effects makeup and I travel, I used to travel to Seattle and Portland for like photo shoots that um, one, one photo shoot that I did, there was a vampire girl and it was for a band in Portland and a woman, I should say not girl. And then there was this man who was the drummer in the, in the, um, band and he had to be dead blood was all over i think his drums on the floor and he had this gash that that i created on his neck <laughs> and it was so fun <laughs> and, yeah. the opportunities within these spaces have led you to um being able to travel you know what I'm saying? See different things and try different things that way. Now, when we talk about this fitness, because I feel like the whole time I've done, you've done some of the fitness, but now are you with, you're actually with a company that offers, I mean, I know that you've been doing more, like you do videos and all of that now. So fill us in a little bit how that all came together, this adaptive trainer. Actually, it's really kind of funny how that happened because um, it, the pandemic was huge in it, actually. Um, there was a series of things that uh, kind of happened with that. Um, my dad got sick. I moved back home. He ended up passing away. Um, and I think that was in 2018. So like right before the pandemic. And then I did a couple of days later, I had to go out because I designed um, makeup for Sweeney Todd in Salem, Oregon. and. Um, it, then uh, after that, I had a couple more gigs, but things started petering off because the pandemic kind of happened. And right. so I was like, well, I, I can't get any makeup work because theaters are shut down. Um, travel was really hard. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm home. What can I do? Um, also, I, I broke my leg and my trainer, I couldn't train with my trainer at the time. And so I kind of, I got depressed with like a lot of things. Plus I had a couple other um, health issues too, all at one time. Um, so I had to, de I dealt with this bout of depression and what kind of helped me was, was really fitness, um, hitting a punching, it started with hitting a punching bag. And um, then I was like, I really like this. And then I started trying to like look for, I guess, another trainer. Um, or I, I found this um, group of people that I no longer work, I, I didn't work with them, but I would take their classes. Okay. And um, I found my current trainer through this group of people. And okay. um, I work on my trainer's platform actually as an instructor. As a strength instructor, we have a strength class, and um, also I I do nutrition stuff as well. Um, and so yeah, right now we're kind of taking a break until October. Um, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm planning a trip to the East Coast to uh, when we get back. Up, for, up and running for the fall. Um, I'm planning on being there with her, kind of kicking it off with her live in her place. Um, okay. So that's going to be really cool. I'm so excited about that. You guys should really check it out. And um, the website, um, it'll be posting and whatnot, but it's www.fitwithamyb.com. And um, there's, with that, you can, um, you could do like pre-recorded videos. Um, you could, you, there's like a monthly thing for $12.99. You have access to pre-recorded videos. Um, but for about $100, $99, $100 a month, you have access to wellness, live wellness sessions, live workouts, virtually every day, different types um, with or without a disability. Um, you know, there's people on the, the, the people who work on the platform, um, do both. And, um, 
So you don't have Very to have much just adaptive, adaptive fitness. Yeah. Yes, they do adaptive and non-adaptive. Um, and there's it's it's just look, there's a lot that goes with it. You're in a Facebook group, exclusive Facebook group, and there's also a food group, Facebook group too. There's mm -hmm. a lot of support. Um, there's a lot of people uh, with disabilities. I have spina bifida and uh, a lot of people with spina bifida were all in it to help. And it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, actually. A wonderful community. And so you got involved um, with her training and then she asked you to start teaching the classes. And then that became, because weren't you teaching them about um, once, once or twice a week? I mean, I feel like I, I saw you on, or was it once a week? I mean, I know you were doing, you were doing all different fitness sessions. I, on her platform, um, I taught or I teach a strength class and we've okay. also done like a co-teach class also once a week and my class is once a week. Mm -hmm. um, plus we have, you know, other people in the middle. It's, it's like five days a week. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, I, I, there may be more, I may be teaching more depending on what the schedule is going to allow. Um, but I'm excited for that. And I do enjoy the class that I do teach yes. very, very much. <laughs> well, and, and looking at that, Evelina, that's why I wanted you to be, be on for this transition series, because you look at the things like you were saying, turning your passion into employment, the things you love from theater to makeup to fitness. And like I, like I said, I mean, this didn't happen overnight for you. You know what no. I'm saying? It didn't come. So there shouldn't be anyone going in that high school and beyond that if you have something that's a passion that tomorrow it's just going to happen. You may have to get creative, right? I mean, you in will the have to get creative 100% <laughs> in some yeah. way. Um, but I think that, um, you know, young adults seeing individuals like yourself, um, like Peter that was on yesterday, and just seeing the determination and the passion behind the things that you are doing, and that you just keep on going, right? You might have to take a breather for a minute, right? Everybody oh, needs absolutely. that. absolutely. And it'll, it could get, you know, very discouraging. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I always wanted to have a career, but um, luckily... A lot of people say, oh, but what are you going to do? You have so many passions or whatnot. I like that I have so many passions because mm -hmm. if I give so much of one passion and it doesn't work out, it's led me into other avenues. So, right. I mean, don't get stuck in one area of something. Mm -hmm. If there are other areas that you enjoy, by all means, see where it leads you. As long as like you... It's a passion of yours. You're not going, well, well, I guess I should do this because I'm good at it, but I really hate it. I mean, right. that's not going to get you in. Uh, that's not good for mental health. That's not good for physical health. That's not good. Right. Um, overall, and I think that, you know, those listening or who watch this back or listen to the podcast um, that's why in our community at the Honor Advocate, there are individuals here that we do shows with that you can reach out to, just like Evelina was telling you, tips that she has learned when she's gone for interviews. Things that, I mean, real life, because obviously we know that in the transitioning out of um, high school, whether that's at the age of 18 or the age of 21, you know what I'm saying? You may be referred to different places from the state or this can help and that help, but there's nothing like the help of real life experience. Yes. And those who have traveled that journey before you um, to be able to go back to. So um, I am just impressed because all the time I'm like, look at what Evelyn is doing now. And I know that even in there, let's go way back a little bit. You were doing some, you did some pageant stuff. When I first yeah, Miss Wheelchair <laughs> Washington. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Miss Wheelchair Washington 2014. Yes. yes. And how did you um how did you get involved with that into the pageant? I've never considered myself to be a pageant person ever because I just look at that and I'm like, I'm not really that poised. I have tattoos. I'm not your typical person. It's an uh, Miss Wheelchair is a um, advocacy pageant. It's not based on beauty, it's based on advocacy. 
And it was through a friend of mine, actually. Um, how did I... I don't even remember how, I don't remember how I actually met her. I just remember like being friends with her for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but it was through her. Uh, she was also a former title holder and she's like, you should do this. Right. And I was like, I'm not a, I'm not a pageant person. I, my, mm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, okay, well, I'll see. I'll go to the pageant. I went through the motions of applying and whatnot. Yeah. And um, that joke was on me. I ended up winning. <laughs> I was literally speechless. Like I had no, I wasn't planning on. On winning. I was like, oh my God. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it was that year I went to different areas in Washington and then you have a platform and you speak about your platform, and mine was, um, uh, if I could remember it now, um, I remember my speech for the national pageant, sort of, <laughs> but it was um, beyond the disability. Um, it was like people first. Okay. The person before your disability, so you know, to look at you before you see the disability. Yeah. See, you know, I'm telling you, if I probably sat on here long enough, I could dig up like 50 other things. <laughs> but, like a lot of stuff. <laughs> but I but I love it. And so, like I said, you know, it's so important um, for young adults that are in that process to realize that there are no limits, right? Um, exactly. The only no limit that I have is I can't sing. <laughs> That's okay. Well, to somebody you might have a beautiful voice. You never know. You know, <laughs> because you have, well, a, I, I said to some, you might have a beautiful voice, right? But if you wanted to try it, you could try it, right? I and could we, try it. Yes. Mm -hmm. The worst that can happen that we need to remember is you get a no. And I always look at that. A no just brings you one step closer to a yes. That's true. I actually, I did musical theater for about five years. Um, with the children's musical theater and in high school and in my junior year. Yeah. High school, junior and senior year too. That's how I got into theater. Mm -hmm. I just off the bat just was like, I don't have singing experience. I have no acting experience, but I'm gonna, why not? <laughs> so. <laughs> so try it, go for it. Um, it. So Evelina with us wrapping, we got to wrap up today, but I want, I wanted to know, is there anything you'd like to leave the audience of young adults in that transition process, their parents that might be listening to remind them of, to remember? Um, you know, my mom might kick my butt if I say this because she's in the other room, but um, don't my parents didn't want me to um, necessarily pursue performing because of all of the rejection and you don't, you didn't see people in wheelchairs on stage unless it was, right. you know, a character. Um, so they didn't encourage me very much mm -hmm. in that way, I guess. And that's probably, um, I have a lot of insecurity in that way. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it, if you have the drive, if you have the dream, if you have, if you feel like you have what it takes, it, it, as hard as it is to push through, just do it, plow through it with, <laughs> with like everything. And you never know, don't be narrow, don't be narrow minded. That sounds rude, but be open, be, be open, open to other avenues. Right, right. No, and that's so powerful because just when you were explaining how when you were going for acting things, you put down that you could, you know what I'm saying, do makeup, you know, things that lead into other things and connect you to others. So sometimes in life we feel like, um, like, why am I wasting my time doing this? But just know that, you know, every meetup that you have, every relationship that you start to build, you know, D does lead somewhere. Sometimes it might not be th this year or next year, but it might be five years down the road and it might give you that opportunity to really branch out and do the things you love. 
Exactly. And you may be really surprised at where it could lead you. It may not, may not even be somewhere where you even thought you could go. Seriously. Right, right. Um, yesterday, and I, I know that I'm the one who said we have to wrap this up, but I <laughs> yesterday, um, oh when I was talking to Pete and his mom, I you know, when he was born, she was in the NICU for you know such a long period of time. You know, when he was when he was born a baby, that's how Pete's diary came to be, and she was writing in the diary. But she said to me yesterday, she's like, I mean, did you ever think like you're gonna be you were in the ICU writing, and now 21 years later, like you are booking him for music gigs. Like, you really think <laughs> that, that was ever going to be something? So, you know, it, it might not, you know, things don't happen overnight, but, you know, to continue following those dreams. You Stick know, with it. Through, yes. Yeah. Stick with it. And if ever, I am certain, um, Evelina, you're open to it. If there is anyone listening to this um, podcast or maybe watching the replay on social media that would want to get a hold of you, reach out, had questions, what would be the best place for them to do that? Um, I, oh, either Facebook or Instagram, I have a page, um, my page on Facebook. I have to, sorry, go get the name of it. Again, oh, I, I, I have it on my board here. Um, Evelina, personal trainer and instructor. Yes, that, um, that works. Um, I also have one for makeup for called makeup by Evelina. Um, or you can do my Instagram. I'm very, I, I get back to people, um, pretty quickly. Um, my Instagram handle is trainer.nutrition.coach. Got it. And we will drop that um, below in the comments on here, and then we can put it in the show notes on the podcast. But you're most active on Instagram. Yeah. In your in your DMs. And that's for us, too. For me, too. Um, at the <laughs> under, yeah. for, I mean, for a social media platform, um, we're most active in that area. I don't know why that is, but I don't know. No, it's easier for me as far as like Facebook. It kind of is a little bit of a cluster to like um, switch back from profile to pages and whatnot. So we it, could do a whole episode on that. I find that all my pages in Messenger, it's like you don't see all the messages on the other pages of their business page. But that's a whole different podcast. <laughs> Right. Um, today we're on um, pursuing um, our passions and um, finding employment in that way. So Evelina, I am so thankful that you said yes to being part of this transition series and sharing part of your story. And I can't so wait <laughs> in the future to see all the additional amazing things that you continue to do and bringing you back on to share some more. Thank you so much. And I also just wanted to say real quick, I have these tattoos um, of butterflies. Mm -hmm. um, I love butterflies because they're free and they're beautiful and they transform. And that's kind of like they go on a journey and whatnot. And yeah, I think that, and that, re that reminds you every day by having those, I bet. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So keep, keep flying and keep transforming, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Honestly, just don't. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, I thank you guys all for tuning in to another episode of The Honor Advocate and being here this afternoon for our transition series. Thanks again, Evelina. And we will see you guys again soon. All right. With that, have a happy afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.